let's talk about it then. Then we gonna dagger you up, and then we can talk about it. On the block with the ox, talk about it. We're prepared to give an answer, talk about it. See, we know what we believe, talk about it. Yelling preset, bring it out, bring it out. On the block with the ox, talk about it. Prepared to give an answer, we talk about it. See, we know what we believe, talk about it. Yelling preset, bring it out, yeah. bring it out. All right. Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to say, Kolo Yahweh, by Shem Hamashiach Yahweh That's all praises to the Most High in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We have a debate, right? The debate is concerning who is the Messiah in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, I should say. Um, who is this Messiah that is speaking about? Um, and we're going to get active, right? And through the Spirit, Yahweh is going to get the victory. Of course, whatever he ordains to happen will happen. Um, hopefully, it is a good conversation. I just got to, we just got to wait for the brother to join. Uh, and once he joins, <coughs> we will get started, right? So, um, of course, if you like the video, then like the video. Um, if you found this video edifying, then share the video. If you want more videos like this, or you want different debates and different styles, or you have somebody that you want um, to pop up on a debate, just send them to YouTube, tell them to comment, or send them to Instagram. Let me show you the Instagram. Found on Sakari Las Vegas or Sakari um, Sakari Phoenix. What's going on with this? You find it right here, right? Sakari Phoenix. Um, Sakari Las Vegas. All right, both of those you can find. Go follow. Um, we have plenty of interesting um, videos here, as well as on this page as well. All right, so make sure that y'all go follow um, and go watch those because they are hilarious, right? Very edifying. So again, we're talking about is Christ the Messiah in the Old Testament? And if not, then who is he? Who is this Messiah in the Old Testament? But as for the daily readings, people should read is like I've been giving daily readings. Um, since we're waiting for him, we can give Trinity Cut, uh, John 5, uh, starting at 19, all the way down. Y'all can read that. That speaks about the Trinity, how Christ the bunk said he is not part of the Trinity. Uh, he's not equal with the Father. Right? So if y'all want more edification, stay tuned because this coming Thursday, I have a live debate with somebody who believes in the virgin birth and the Trinity. Right? Which the Bible does not teach. So we're going to be debating that live. So y'all stay tuned for that. Boom. What's going on, brother? How you feeling today? Amari, how you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. Just chilling. Beautiful hot Sunday. Oh, um, no, you know, yeah, it is hot today. Listen, crazy hot. Uh, if you want to, you know, introduce yourself, your stance. Um, I already let them know what we're debating. Um, is Christ or who is the Messiah in the Old Testament? Um, so if you want to 
you know, give yourself an introduction and what you believe in if you congregate with anybody? Yeah, I'm, I'm my name is John. Um, basically, I'm Old Testament only. Um, I don't believe in the New Testament at all. Uh, and, and pretty much that's my stance, and that's what that's what I'm, that's where I'm coming at with it on my side of the debate. Beautiful. So, who is the Messiah in the Old Testament? Well, there was many messiahs. I mean, uh, the Messiah is pretty much an anointed one, and a Messiah could be a prophet. A Messiah could also be the high priest, and uh, a Messiah could also be the uh, the king of Israel. So basically, somebody like Moses was a Messiah. Somebody like Aaron was a Messiah because he was a high priest. Uh, David was a Messiah because he was anointed king of Israel. You know, so it's pretty much something that you have to be anointed for. Okay, so the Messiah, do you believe that there is going to be a Messiah that, okay, maybe I don't want to put this on you. Do you believe that? I think I know where you're going. Yeah, I believe that there will be a Messiah that will be raised up. And who, who do correct. you think that is? It could be, it could, it, there's no telling who it is. There's no telling. No telling who it is. Do you believe that he comes from the Davidic line? Correct. Okay, but you, you wouldn't be... The, the sect of brothers who believe that it will be David reincarnated. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to say for sure whether it, it is in fact going to be him. But then I'm not. I'm not going to uh, say anybody's wrong if they if that's what they believe. You see what I'm saying? Because it could. That could be the case. Because in Jeremiah it does state that um, David will be raised up. But then that could be something that could be figurative or it could be literal. Right. Okay, so we can we can we can just get straight into it. Um, mm -hmm. I want to start out simple, not Jeremiah three, Jeremiah twenty three. All right, Jeremiah twenty three, um, starting at verse uh, you know, where I want to start at. Oh, I'm thinking of 33. Um, Jeremiah 23 is starting at five. I'm sure. Right. Um, really, really, I wanted to start right at the. Really, personally, I wanted to start at the beginning of uh, uh, Matthew one and 23, and how they try to correlate that with uh, Isaiah seven and fourteen. Because there's no way that that uh, Isaiah fourteen seven and fourteen could be referring to Jesus when, given well, the context of the first the first thirteen verses. Well, we don't we don't we don't believe that 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 baby that child that was born in Isaiah eight because it was prophesied in Isaiah seven we don't believe that that child that was born in Isaiah eight was the Messiah it's something called a dual prophecy so okay have, and, I, and I don't and, and I'm sorry to cut you off I do understand this is your platform but I don't I don't adhere to to uh, anything where that's considered a dual prophecy because. When you, when you, whenever any, what I find is whenever I debate people and they, when they try to use that term, that something's a dual prophecy, it's like, it's, it's like you can plug and play that as you see fit. You know what I'm saying? You can't differentiate which, which, what I find is a lot of them can't differentiate which ones are dual prophecies and which ones aren't. It's pretty much something that's personally handpicked. Well, what I mean by dual prophecy is I don't, I don't mean that it was fulfilled in Isaiah 8. And then it was fully fulfilled in Matthew 1. I don't, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the child being born and his his name being Emmanuel, what was that a representation of? Okay. First, well, there was a representation of God being with a particular, individ a particular individual because I'm, Emmanuel was supposed to be a sign. To, towards a particular individual, it had nothing. Anything it had nothing to do with anything else, especially with anything in the New Testament. Like I, like I said, when you read the first thirteen verses, if you would go ahead, bring it up, and you read the first thirteen verses, and you tell me what does that have to do with through those thirteen up to, all the way? I mean, well, actually, read one through one Isaiah chapter seven, one verses one through fourteen, and you tell me how does that correlate with Jesus at all? Because it okay. gives the context right there in the same chapter. I'm so, sorry. No, you're fine. Um, mm -hmm. topic at hand that we spoke about was who is the Messiah in the Old Testament? Um, 
now if you want to have another discussion disproving the new testament that's different but our conversation is dealing with who is this messiah spoken about in the old testament that's coming back to save us right is the messiah that came in the time of um let's say around 33 AD, 39 AD, so on and so forth. Is that the Messiah that was spoken of in the Old Testament? That's what I that's what we agreed to. Um that was the topic. So uh, I, thought, I was I, okay, okay. All right, I thought it was like okay, um, when we when I sp spoke to you in that comment feed, I thought I what I stated was how uh Jesus didn't fulfill any of the old testament prophecy, pretty much. But we can have um, i'm open well, to having this he did he, he did fulfill a lot of the old testament prophecies um and we can get into that uh if we have time i gotta go around 6 45 ish uh so i do want to get this over give me one sec i'm trying to i'm trying to get something going hold on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> if you if you would like because again you got my you got my messenger i always respond if you would like to have a different conversation concerning if the new testament is valid um if we should follow or read the new testament then we can you you can question me on anything that you have of the misunderstanding of the new testament but me personally i just want to stay in the old i don't want to go to the new i just want to stay in the old and see if the old solidifies this messiah or or yahweh as we know him in the new testament right, right. so i want to go to jeremiah 23. <laughs> um that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm following you. Let me get that in my, in my Bible as well. So yeah, um, gonna, they uh, said it was a 33 or because I know you went to 23 before. And you, nah, you I want to get that in a second. I want to get Michael 5 first. That's what I uh, Michael that's 5. Let me get there. Let me get there. Yeah, I'm old school with it, man. I'm, I'm, I got the KJV open right now. Nah, you good, man. I understand. Sometimes I like using my Bible than the, than the laptop. Right, but I didn't know it's faster when you when you use the app, but I'm using the app on here to talk to you on right now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, ahead, go ahead, continue, because I, I can uh, listen to you while you're reading it, because I know it's going to take a while for me to get there. No, you're good. I can wait for you. I'm trying to send this to somebody, but it's not working. Michael 5 is like at the end of the Old Testament. Yeah. Got it. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, cool. So Michael yeah. 5 and 2. It says, mm -hmm. Thou Bethlehem Ephrata, fix this. Um, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth, uh yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in israel do you know who this is talking about it was, well, it's, talking, it's definitely talking about it like a ruler a messiah right uh whose goings forth have been from old from everlasting so what does it mean that his goings forth were from old from everlasting to well the way i understand it is uh his, his knowledge and understanding of the law um okay the uh, law has been from everlasting yeah because i want to go to daniel 9 but i don't want to go to daniel 9 just yet um verse 3 therefore will he give them up until last time Jabez was and then he's going to show you return to israel um it's kind of hard to deal with this because <laughs> Okay, we're gonna have to go to Daniel nine. I ain't gonna hold you. Right, because I don't see I don't see where Jesus fulfilled yeah. this. Yeah, well, he was born in Bethlehem. That's how he fulfilled it. But you're gonna say that you don't. But believe it's, it's more it's more to it than that. Just like how people try to I, I forget if it's uh Zechariah. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it's Zechariah twelve when people try to say he well, okay he rolled in on the court of an ass or whatever and and they and they leave it at that but when you read further it mentions the tribe of ephraim and i don't see where jesus had anything to do with the tribe of ephraim. you see what i'm saying that's just an example that i can remember well, you're talk, you talking about this but no. when it says the thou bethlehem ephraim no i'm talking about it's somewhere in uh 
I think I believe it's in Zechariah. I believe it's Zechariah 12. I might be mistaken. I'm just trying to remember things off the top of my head. Yeah, we can go to Zechariah 12 first, matter of fact. We could do that. Daniel 9 is really, to be honest, I ain't gonna hold you. I don't think that you would refute Daniel 9 and have an answer for Daniel 9. And Daniel 9 deals with um timeline, right? And it, it, it's kind of yeah, that would that, that would be real lengthy, man. We'll we'll be that'll be like it's, a real it's, long it's, spar, it's, man, right? There. It's pretty quick. Yeah. It's pretty quick. Watch this, right? Zechariah twelve and nine. It says, "And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem." Has this happened yet? That the Lord shall seek to kill all the nations that um that came up against Jerusalem? No, that's not that has not happened yet. No. Okay, and it says, "And I will pour upon the house of David." Right. So when we go into this word, David. Right. Of course, it does mean David's literal name because there was a man named David, which means beloved. Mm -hmm. when we scroll down to the Hebrew to the Gesenius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. And we see here it says this name denotes Messiah, the son of David. So this is speaking about a Davidic Messiah that comes out of the loins of David. It says mm -hmm. the city of David, i.e. Zion or the family or the descendants of David, right? So this is somebody that comes from the Davidic line. So whoever this man is that is spoken about in Zechariah 12 and 10, which you said has not come to pass, must come from the Davidic line. It says, and I will pour upon the, uh, upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and the supplications, and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, who is the me that they have to look upon that they pierced? That comes okay. from David. Okay, because you know that that's more than one meaning to that to that word pierced, right? What is the what is the other meaning for pierced? If, if you know, if you have the Hebrew lexicon right there. Yeah, it says to pierce, thrust through, pierce, thrust, to pierce, run through, to be pierced through, pierce, riddled. Uh, another, one, another one that says to dig out, to dig, to dig out, but it's, oh, uh, okay. To dig out. Let me, let me read this. Here, hold on, hold on. Let me look at this. Okay. I see where you're going. Okay. But. Let me ask you this, because we talking with you, because you skipped the head, right? Okay, it, and, this, and I'll just read the eighth verse. You know what I'm saying? And they say, okay. in that in that day, shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, he the people among them. In that day, shall be as David, right? Mm -hmm. And those in the house of David shall be as God, as the angels of the Lord before them. Has that happened yet? Has Jesus fulfilled that? When it says, "In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, uh, and he mm -hmm. uh, and he that is feeble among them, in at mm -hmm. that day shall be as David." No, because verse nine. No, right, happened. okay, right. So, if if that had if that hasn't happened yet, then to talk about they that look upon him that has been pierced, that could be any, that could be that could be anybody. It's plenty of Israelites that have been pierced. I didn't say that Christ fulfilled this yet. I, right. I agree that this hasn't happened yet. I'm saying. This happened yet, who they have pierced. Christ was pierced. I'm trying to figure out who is this man that was pierced that's coming back. It says that he's coming back. It, says, it will be revealed. It will be revealed. That will be revealed after you understand the events of that as that is mentioned in chapter eight. So so you mean in verse eight? In verse, yeah, in verse eight. That's correct. Okay, so yeah. I get that those who are feeble among them shall be as David. Right, those who are mm -hmm. weak shall be as mighty as David. I do believe that the Lord will seek to destroy any nation that came up against Jerusalem. I do believe that, and I do believe that um he will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. I do believe that's going to happen as well. And exactly. I do believe but, it, but what I'm saying, but what I'm saying, I mean, and I don't mean to cut you off, but what I'm saying is until that happens, we can't confirm. Okay, John, all right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You understand. I'm not saying that this has been fulfilled yet. That's what I'm saying. We're in agreement that this hasn't been fulfilled. Here's the issue. These same people that are in this time frame, which is in our future, 
it says that they shall look, even those other people shall look upon him whom they have pierced. Who is this man that they're looking at that, that, that was pierced in past time? I want to know who that is. That is going to be revealed when that happens. We can't confirm whether that 100% sure that that's Jesus. Okay, so it says, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and they shall be in bitterness for him as one in bitterness of his firstborn. In that day shall there be great mourning in Jerusalem. So you don't know who this is, but you do no. agree that it's coming from the Davidic line, though. That's correct. Did Christ come from the Davidic line? Pursuing the Matthew 1? Uh, according according to Matthew 1, but of course, but once again, let's go, let's head there to Matthew 1 and 23, and let's, yeah. that's where I'm saying, we can chop it off the head, we can chop off the head right right at the start, bro. you know what I'm saying, if you go to Matthew 1 and 23 and tell me how does Isaiah 7 and 14, like, how, did, how does that have anything because, to do with it? I'm going to tell you just like this, bro, because the child in Isaiah 7 is a sign that, it, okay. They're assigned to who? Assigned to who? I get you. I get you. Hold on. We're, we're just okay, right, let's get to go to seven. All right. I'm not, I'm gonna get it. Relax, dude. Relax. All right. Uh, because you're not going to allow what the conversation is supposed to be about is who is the, the Messiah. Because I have the receipts. I have. And it's the reason why. And I see that's the reason why you don't want to go here because you know that, about that, 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 that Matthew Matthew, Matthew 1 respect. and 23 is false. If you would show respect, bro, I'm, go, I'm at Matthew 1 right now, dude. You, you have to relax okay. and slow down. It, the, the issue is that when we go to Zechariah 12, when we went to Jeremiah 23, when I go to Daniel 9, when I go to Isaiah 53 or Psalms 22 or Psalm 16, you're going to keep saying the same thing. You're going to keep bringing up one point, which is in Matthew 1 and 23. So okay, we're gonna we can go to Psalm. We can deal with Psalm 16 as well. Okay, we can with so we can, we're going to deal with other scriptures. We're not just going to deal with what you want to do. That's the problem. I will okay, deal with. We can deal with what you. We can deal with what you want to deal with. For the I same mean, yo, it's, your, it's your platform. It's your platform. Like, I mean, I don't, listen, what I don't want to do is over talk each other. Right. When you give your explanation of what it's talking about, I allow you to talk. But I have to keep re-explaining myself when you keep interrupting. So I don't want to keep doing that because there's an audience that's going to watch and that is watching that. I don't want them to get annoyed because we're over talking each other. So Matthew 1 and 23. I'm going to read Isaiah 7 first. Isaiah 7 and 14. We can start up. At 10, it says, More, Moreover, the Lord spake unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, ask it either in the depth or the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, <clears throat> is it a small thing for you to weary men, but you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself, this is Isaiah speaking to Ahaz, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou poor shall be forsaken of both her kings. Matthew 1 and 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Where, where do you find an issue with this? Okay. What was this? What was the sign? Who was the sign for? The sign was for the children of Israel. No, the sign was for King Ahaz. Who was who? Because who was who was the most I talking to in that? Do Isaiah? Who was the most I talking to in this? Because verse? The, the, the Assyrians were going against the children of Israel. Israel and right, and he sent and 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 that's what in his back. Let me finish my answer. Ahaz. Gotta, the, gotta, the, the sign was. To, gotta okay. let me finish my answer. They were, oh, okay. going I thought against, you were. they were going against the children of Israel. And so Ahaz and the children of Israel needed a sign to know that God is with them when they go to fight. Okay. Because did he did he, was, did he was, ask the children of Israel for a sign or did he ask did he did to, to give to uh give them a sign or to ask to uh he asked King Ahaz? So that means Ahaz was the or only so that means Ahaz was the only one that received the sign that God is with him and no other Israelite, if you're going to use that logic. Okay, and right. And so what is that? So oh, right. It's for the whole nation right. of Israel. It's for, it's okay. for the Okay, for, for, for what though? For what? To, that, that, what it was a sign that what wasn't going to happen. What do you mean? No, it was a sign that something was going to happen. The land no, 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 but wait, 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 wait. Slow down. This is where you got to slow down because you're not understanding my question. What was the sign given to King Ahaz for? 
That's exactly what I was about to answer. That the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. That was the sign that what it was for. What was the what was the what was the kings? What was the two kings? You have um what was it? Uh Syria and Damascus. You're right. So what does that have to do? What does that have Rezin, to do with you? And Pekka, the son of Ramalia. Because again, I think I think you don't understand what I'm saying because you keep cutting me off. The sign, the child was a sign that God is with you. When Christ was born, it was a sign for the children of Israel that God is with us. Not that two kings shall be forsaken of the land. No, it was a sign that God will be with us because Christ's name was not Emmanuel the same way this child in Isaiah 7, his name was not Emmanuel. It was Mahershala Hashbaz. And Isaiah why was it called? What was it? Why, why was the child? Why was the child's name changed from uh, Emmanuel to Mahershala Hashbaz? You got to tell me. Do you, you don't know? Uh, because it's, it's because, it's because well, I, I'll, answer, I'll answer it. It's because King Ahab sinned against the Most High. He didn't believe he made it. He, he gave he gave secret things that was unto the most high to Yeah, um, I don't know if I rock with it or don't run a rock with it. That's just me because I don't know. Because uh, again, um, yeah. I read it before. Um, and I think I might have asked and got an answer. I just forgot. I'm I'm a human, I forget things. Um, uh, but again, right. that's the whole reason why. Again, I didn't say it was for the I, the prophecy in Isaiah 7 was not for Matthew 1 and 23. That's what it was for. That's what that prophecy for. No, the prophecy was fulfilled in Isaiah 8. I do believe that, right? But the sign, when it says this, it's just speaking about, boom, we have a sign, a child, Christ, the Messiah, is with us. He's born, okay, in, but Bethlehem. It's, it's, He's okay. born in Bethlehem. He's born of a virgin, which is a young marriageable woman. She's not an actual virgin that never had sex. This is the this is the child that is to be our Messiah. Can we now move forward from Matthew 1? You, you're not no. going to you're not going right, to right because I want right because the thing is where 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 the thing is that I want to inject is is saying that in the Isaiah one and twenty three that that was done in fulfillment of Isaiah seven and fourteen it's it's saying that that's fulfillment and, that's, and and what I'm saying and you agreeing with me that 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 Isaiah seven and fourteen has nothing to do with Christ bro. no I said it was for I didn't say it had nothing to do with Christ I said it was fulfilled in Isaiah eight. But you don't believe in the concept of dual fulfillment. I can't persuade mm -hmm. you to do that. If we're not going to go anywhere, but keep going back, you're going to state your cause. I'm a state mind. We're never going to agree. We're never going to come to common ground. So why not just move forward to the actual debate at hand, which is who is the Messiah in the Old Testament? I don't want to go to the New Testament. I want to stay in the Old just for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, can, can we discuss uh, Psalms 1 and uh, 110? It's well there. We can uh, we'll go here and then after this we're gonna get my verse Psalms 110 and one. What's your contention okay. on Psalms 110 and one? So you believe that that's talking about Christ as well, correct? Uh, who is the second Lord? Okay, when you read Lord in all capital letters, who is that referring? To? This right here is Yahweh. Okay, that's okay. So that would be concerned that like, whom Yahweh uh, the New Testament called the Father, correct? Uh, the Father, yes, of course, not the okay. Son, the Father. Okay, so you saying that that lowercase, that lowercase uh, Lord, it would be Christ, correct? Well, the whole understanding of uppercase and lowercase is not in the original manuscripts, but the first Lord will be how the Tetragrammaton, and the second Lord will be Christ. Yes. Okay, are you, are you sure about that? Who is talking here? Okay. Who's it could be. It's, it's, a, it's a writer of with. It's a. I believe this King Solomon talking here. So Solomon is talking in Psalms 110, a Psalm of David. Because, yeah, because it's a Psalm. But when it's saying it's a Psalm of David, it's a Psalm about David. And how I confirm that is okay. Hold that right there. All right. Go to First Kings five and three, and tell me why that closely correlates with that undeniable. First Kings, First Kings five and three. First Kings five and three. Thou knowest how that David my father could not build an house unto the name of the Lord his God for the wars which were about him on every side until the Lord put him under the until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. Okay. That the closely the mirrors. Hold on, hold on. Did the Lord put the enemies of Solomon under his feet? No, it's saying David. You're reading it out of context. It's clear. I know. I know. Hold right on, John, you. John, John. Slow, bro, you have to relax. I'm not saying that this is speaking about Solomon. I'm saying 
when it says that his enemies were under the soles of his feet, what does that mean? That nobody's going to war against him? Nobody's going to, what does it mean? It means that it, it, he, it, he, would, he would end enough wars so that Solomon could have time and peace so he could build the temple. So Solomon had the enemies under his feet as well. No, he had time of peace. The, the, the enemies were put under David's feet. So, so he didn't have other nations working for him. He did. Okay, so the, his enemies were under his feet as well. All right. Okay. Because, so of what, because, because of what King David, because of what King David did. See, and this is what I'm saying. This is direct. Well, this is showing. Back. Wait, let me finish. I'm going back to Psalm 10 because we kind of jumped mm -hmm. over. It says, "The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand." What does that mean? That's that's basically the most high showing favoritism towards King David. There's no, there's nobody's literally sitting at the right hand of the Most High. Okay, we're going to see about that in a second. Um, don't make thine enemies thy footstool. Watch this. Daniel seven. <laughs> Daniel seven, and. All right, okay, let's get there. I like that one too. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Let me get that in Daniel 7. <sighs> because a lot of people think that that's talking about Christ as well, but they focus yeah, too much on the vision. They uh, focus too much on the vision and not the uh they focus too much on the vision and not the interpretation of that vision, which is more important. Daniel 7 and 13. I saw in the night's vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came down with the clouds of heaven. Who is the Son of Man that's coming down with the clouds of heaven? The saints of the most high. So the Son of Man came mm -hmm. down the clouds of the heaven is the saints of the most high. Yeah, okay, right. Well, now let me now let me explain. Give me some time because it's, it's, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna you don't even have to leave the chapter to explain that. Okay. Cause you saying oh, look, look, when you when you read in the first, let me see, Isaiah, I mean like Daniel seven and nine, right? That's, that's talking about the vision, right? Now, even Daniel, when he heard, when he saw the vision of the Son of Man coming to the cloud unto the ancient of days, he, look, I'm going to read, I'm going to read it. I'm going to start at 15. He say, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me because he didn't understand the vision. And, he, and then in verse 16, it says, I came near unto one of them that stood by, and asked him the truth of this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of things. When you went, so when you, when you got a vision, didn't, didn't Joseph interpret dreams? The, the, even the Pharaoh didn't understand some of the dreams he was having. It had to be interpreted. So, which, which, so, which, so, which, so, which, so, which one do you go with? I'm, 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 I'm building, I'm building some. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, because you're reading a bunch of things that, that has nothing to do with the Messiah in, in, in that's coming. I just want to know. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Then this is this is this has nothing to do. Brother, just prove to me how this son of man is the saints. Because when we keep reading in the same verse, it says the son of man came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. Who is the they? Who is the him? And who is this him? Okay, the, the ancient of days, of course, is the most high, right? Okay, so when it says, and they okay. brought him, who's the they? This is like, once again, this is a vision, so it's the angel. So the angels brought him, who's the him? The son of man. Who's the, that's singular, though. Mm -hmm. you, said that this, you said that this is the son of man is the saints of the most high. Now you're saying it's okay. one person. Because once again, you're not listening. You want, me to, you want me to explain it again or no i don't because first you said the son of man is the saints and now you're saying that this hymn is the son of man but it's singular. okay according it's, it's, to it's, listen wait all right listen i'm gonna explain it one more time that's according to the vision okay that they're singular all right but according to the interpretation do you what is, is interpret what is, is it where, where does i just listen because you give me this whole this explanation i just want to i just want you to get to the point where it says the son of man is the saints that's why i want to know because it it, it, it it explains it in the interpretation 
when you okay, read, uh, wait, 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 I'm gonna wait because you now you cutting me off. Now you cutting me off. Make sure to get to and you're not letting me get. Okay, I'm getting and I'm getting to it. If you would just let me explain, it. hold on. All right, look. It say in in the interpret. I came on and the, the interpretation of things. That's the thing. End of the sixteenth verse. I'm gonna continue with seventeen. Now let me explain, let me read it and explain it before you cut me off, please. All right. It say Can these you, great beats. Hold on. Nice. I don't need a long answer, bro, because I'm under a time it's limit. Not. I, over more I get it, and it's not gonna take me two seconds. I'm reading the next two verses. If you would just be patient, bro. It's just the next two verses, all right? And it's saying, look, because it's giving the interpretation. These okay. great beasts, which are four, are four kings. So it's not it? literally four beasts. It's four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Where are you reading and that? Like, but I'm reading that sev the 17th verse of, of Daniel 7. And I'm reading Daniel 7 and, seven, 7 and 17. Okay. Okay? And it's the interpretation. These great beasts. Which in the vision where the it's talking about the beast, the four beasts, those are the four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and even ever. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's talking about this, this son of man is the saints. Mm hmm And, and then look in the twenty second verse, this this is according to the interpretation. This, this according to the interpretation. Uh, will this be the children of Israel, yes or no? yeah okay here's where we have a problem now because again you, you fall on your own sword ezekiel oh i'm not even typing because this is talking about the children of israel possessing the kingdom ezekiel 37 and verse 24 and david my servant shall be king over them this is in the kingdom of god and they shall have one shepherd, and they shall walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I've given my uh, unto Jacob, my servants, wherein your fathers have dwelt. This is talking about the children of Israel living in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. In right, Daniel it's seven, in the David. But watch this. In Daniel 7, it speaks about this son of man, verse 14, and there was given him dominion, glory, and a kingdom. The saints okay. are going to take the king. Hold on. The saints are going to take the kingdom, but this son of man is going to be having dominion in this kingdom. And in Ezekiel 37, it speaks about our kingdom and a prince that is ruling in our kingdom, which means the son of man in Daniel 7 cannot be the saints. Because Ezekiel 34 says you have the children of Israel and you have a prince. You can't, you can't do it like that. Listen, once again, I'm going to go run this by you one more time, bro. And there's no point in even going forward if you can't, if you cannot comprehend what I'm saying. You're going based off of a vision. I'm going off of the interpretation of the vision. Okay. All right. Which one, which one is more important, the vision? Or the interpretation, or actually knowing the meaning of it, they're, they're, they're both equally important. They're both, but which one? But okay, but which one do you get more understanding out of the interpretation? Correct. Uh, both. You, so, okay, so when Peter, so when Peter got the vision about the, let's go to the New Testament. Peter so, got the vision about oh, the unclean meats on the sheep, right? In the old again. Oh no, 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 no! I'm because I'm going. I'm proving the point. Because you and if you don't want me to prove that point because you don't want to see our followers, your followers to see how you're getting confounded right now. On, now, listen, on. when I right, wait, 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 let me finish. Let me finish. No, John, you cannot go to Acts 10 to try to talk about the vision that Peter had. What's going to happen is we are talking about in the Old Testament who is this Messiah? If you're gonna over talk me. You're not going to be heard much, bro. You can't sit up here and try to move the goalpost to something else. In Daniel 7, it speaks about a kingdom. John, they can't hear you right now. Because I'm trying to explain something and you refuse to listen. Who is this prince that is ruling in the same kingdom that Daniel 7 spoke about? You have a kingdom and the saints ruling in the kingdom. I agree. Who is this prince that is now among these Israelites 
that is over the children of Israel. Who is that? A descendant of David who has okay. not been raised up yet. So does that mean this son of man in Daniel 7 is the same person that's coming with the, first of all, how are all the saints that are on earth coming with the clouds of heaven to coming back to save the people that are on earth? How does that make sense? You, it, it, it will make sense if you read the interpretation instead of focusing on the okay. bit. We're gonna move forward because you're just gonna keep saying Right, right, because you, you can't beat that. You can't do nothing with that. Enough. You're Let's focusing to... on a vision and I'm focusing okay. on the interpretation of the vision which gives the meaning of the vision. You got me, Daniel 9, let's go to Daniel 9. Do you understand the prophecy of Daniel 9? No, we're not going to Daniel 9, bro. You understand? I just I just thought you out on two, three different things, bro. No, you you try you now you trying to move the goal, bro. No, you didn't. Nice try. There's an audience and they will decide. And they, they see that. You you focus on the vision and I read that you won't even let me finish. How are you gonna come over here and just just demand something on a platform that you, you, you haven't been on? You're raising your voice, you're screaming, you're doing all of this. I'm asking you direct questions and you answering everything but the question. You don't know who this Messiah is that's spoken about in Jeremiah 23. You didn't know who's talking about in Micah 4. You don't know who is talking about in Daniel 7. You're saying it's the saints, but it's not matching up. So, Mr. John, I'm going to read Daniel 9 and we're going to talk. We're going to talk about what this prophecy is. Okay. It's about time. Right. So, Hold on, don't run now. We're gonna get him to come back on. All right, because what's not gonna happen is being screamed over. That's what's not gonna happen. You gotta have the call. Because it's Daniel 9 gonna get brought up. We're gonna figure out what he's got to say about it. We agreed. Let me show this real quick. We agreed that the topic of conversation will be who is the Messiah in the Old Testament. He keeps trying to take me to the New Testament. Not the conversation, sir. I don't want to have that conversation. My con we can have a conversation about that another time. But I dedicated this time to talk about who is this Messiah in the Old Testament. And I want to get down now. I want to get Daniel now for a specific reason. <clears throat> but it's all good though, right? Um, Daniel nine is a cold, a cold, um. Uh, buddy had done blocked me. Um, Daniel 9 is cold when it comes time to proving who the Messiah is, right? So Daniel 9 24. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. All right. So the 70 weeks is not literal weeks, they're years. Um, we see of years 490 years, right? And then when we just deal with the interpretation it don't make sense if we want to calculate weeks but it does when it says years it says and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy again he will focus on the vision the vision the vision you're talking about the vision the vision the vision who is the son of man the son of man is the saints ezekiel 37 speaks about my share my spend yeah ezekiel 37 speaks about a kingdom, the same as Daniel 7. <laughs> I couldn't even get 2 Samuel 7. I couldn't go to my Psalms 22, Isaiah 53. I done told them powerful brothers in Vegas, Houston, New York, and in Arizona. Can't get everything I want to get out. Maybe if he was cordial. Um, and especially if somebody tells you, I don't mean to cut you off, but then cut you off multiple times, they mean to cut you off, right? Um, so verse 25, know therefore and understand 
uh, that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, which ironically is mentioned in Ezekiel 37 and 25, which correlates to Daniel 7. Uh, Lord. Um, which correlates to Daniel 7. And 13. Um, and 14. We see this. Oh, I don't know why I keep kicking the car. Camera straight. My camera straight. <laughs> um, correlates right we have this prince it says shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks right and we do the math right let's just use this because it helps us a little bit better <clears throat> it says what is it combined we don't need the nlt it says now listen to understand seven sex sets of seven plus seven sloppy seven sets of seven plus 72 sets of seven will pass from the time of the commandment uh, to rebuild Jerusalem unto a ruler. So let's do it on my phone. All right, you got 62 plus seven. Oh, my bad, that's 32. 62 plus seven, 69. Okay, yeah, yeah, 69, God. Right, so these are years, right? So 69 times seven is 483. So from the time to the rebuilding of Jerusalem, 483 years will pass, and then this Messiah will show up, right? Where do we see this rebuilding of the tent, the temple, the um, city? That's a wrong book. Um, Nehemiah 2. And two, it says, Wherefore the king said unto me, said unto Nehemiah, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing that thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid. And said unto your, the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, for what uh, dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said unto the king, if it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send unto me Judah. Send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulcher, that I may build it. Send me back to this city so I may build it. And what do we have this in the time of? Or the Xerxes. All right, let's bring a Bible hub. Bible. Let's see if we can find the time. Uh, maybe I should go do that. Bible timeline. Where do we see Artaxerxes give Nehemiah the decree to rebuild the city? Mm -mm -mm. 444 circa. All right, where's that? Um, builders of the walls named Artaxerxes sends Nehemiah to Jerusalem. Right, builders overcome ridicule. Nehemiah, boom, they're building the city. Right, um, in 444 BC. So from 444. Uh, which one am I need? Boom. We need 483 years. I'm going to pull up the calculator. So, clear this. We have 444 circa around this time um, minus 483 years because, again, it says from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So, from the time that Artaxerxes gave Nehemiah the decree to go rebuild Jerusalem, which was 444, until the time of the Messiah coming uh, coming into his, uh, coming on the scene would be 483 years. That commandment started at 444, right? You minus 483, you get 
39 AD, which is in, oh, what just happened? Okay, let me pull it back up, my bad. 444 minus 483, right? Which is the time of Christ. Because 444 would be BC. It counts down to 344, 244, 144, 44, 39 AD, right? The time of Christ. Who is this Messiah that's called the Prince? Now, when you take a look at this word Messiah and Prince, watch this. This is what's cold about the Bible, right? And this is another one of our faith boosters. Um on why we should continue to follow what we follow, right? This word Messiah means what? Anointed. What did he say in the beginning of the debate? What is a Messiah? Well, Messiah is just an anointed one. Yes. And this Messiah around 39 AD is an anointed one, which would be Christ, right? Anointed one of the Messiah, messianic prince of the king of Israel, of the high priest of Israel speaks of Cyrus, of the patriarchs as anointed kings, right? So again, this is the Messiah, but it's also calling him the prince. And what does the word prince mean? Leader, ruler, captain, prince, ruler, prince, prince, overseer. And ironically, watch this. Listen, I don't even know this for a fact, but I guarantee you that in, in Le uh, Leviticus, Ezekiel 37 and 25, Did I miss it? Is it different? One of the prince, captain, leader, rising mist, vapor. It's the same thing. Governor, prince, ruler, king. It's the same thing. Leader, ruler, captain, prince, ruler, prince, prince, overseer, ruler. Listen, we need we, we need answers, right? I'm mad, but he blocked me. I just asked him, uh, I said, you scared of Daniel 9 or something? And then I got blocked. Damn. It's all good, though. <laughs> that was quick as hell. I ain't hold you. Um, so, boom, we got 483 years from the time of the uh, commandment to restore Jerusalem. We see that in Nehemiah 2, right, which takes us to 39 AD. We talking about timeline here. This is the interpretation of the dream, right? We need answers. If it's not the Messiah who is called Christ or Yahweh Hamashiach, who is it, right? They might say, this started in Cyrus's time, right? Now we see in Ezekiel or Ezra 1. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, the king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all kingdoms of the earth and hath charged me to build an house at Jerusalem, which is in judah right nehemiah said i need to go rebuild judah cyrus says this is going to be built in judah and it's going to be a house at jerusalem not jerusalem but a house at jerusalem and what is this speaking about think about the temple right the temple being rebuilt right um we see then rose up the chief fathers of judah and benjamin and the priests and the levites with all them whose spirit god hath raised to go build the house of the lord which is in jerusalem what is this house of the Lord? The temple, right? So if we go to the timeline on when that started, right? Because again, if somebody says this is Cyrus, this is when Cyrus started it, you could chop their head off because Cyrus gave that decree. Where is it at? Uh, uh, um, Cyrus gave that decree at 537. We can give them the benefit of the doubt at 500, which is not true. Um, but that commandment to restore it was around 537. So let's do some math. 537 minus 483, 54 BC. What Messiah came in that time? They might say the Maccabees or Onias the third or whoever else they want to say. It's problematic when we keep reading. Um, where are we at? Uh, one, it's problematic because it's not, it's not the temple or, or it's not the city of Jerusalem. It's the temple because it says the street shall be built again, the wall, even in troublous times. So what happened in the time of Nehemiah? Where did it say that at? 
brothers had a bill with swords on them. The builders of the wall. Let's see. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see if I can find it this way. Oh, uh, well, oh. That don't work. Where is it? Let me let me find this real quick. The wall. Oh, it's in four. I'm one chapter too early. Four. Uh, um, Jews for themselves. Ooh, well, we could just do this. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they receive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Right. So now they questioning like, what, what's they finna do? Like, nah, we, 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 we can't have that. Um. Oh, watch this. Uh, verse 15, and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought them count, uh, brought their counsel to naught that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields and the bows and the have again. What are those? Oh. And the rulers uh, were behind all the house of Judah, they which built on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid in, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. That is what it means. The uh, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. When they was rebuilding the temple, they was just rebuilding the temple, right? Um. But in Nehemiah 4, we see that they was in troublous times to rebuild the city, right? But let's go back to the timeline. It's 537. It goes back to 54 AD. Where, where were they rebuilding this city in troublous times? But here's where it gets even more uh, cruel. Verse 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come. <clears throat> and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary this would mean that the temple wasn't really destroyed in 70 a.d it was actually destroyed around 54 54 bc if they want to say that it started at cyrus i hope we follow on along um which it didn't happen right uh but the people of the prince um is titus vespasia and his army um it says, and, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, so seven years. And in the midst of the week, in the middle of these seven years, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consumption, uh, consummation, uh, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So, um, this is speaking about our temple being destroyed uh, and the overspreading of abominations. He shall make it desolate. It's speaking about what Titus Vespasian did to the temple, right? Him having the intercourse, um, cutting the curtain of the Holy of Holies, uh, saying that he has slain God, doing the abomination, sacrificing the abomination, so on and so forth. This is the acts and the um, the things in which Titus Vespasia did. Now, man, I want to go to so much. I wanted to do so much um, and just talk about so much. I want to know what he felt about 2 Samuel 7. Um, in verse 12, and when, the, and when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy vows, and I will establish his kingdom. He will say that this is Solomon. There's a problem with that. He shall build an house for my name. He will establish the throne of, or I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Um, his throne wasn't forever, but they might play a game. 
Forever doesn't mean forever. Okay. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, which Solomon did, I will chasten, I will chasten him with the rod of men. Solomon and never got whooped by the rod of men. And with the stripes of the children of men. Now, they might play a game saying, oh, where? So that means Christ sinned. Christ is Solomon, reincarnated, right? A lot of people don't have um, the understanding of that, which is fine. But that is our understanding, which is dealing with reincarnation. Um, but that's why we believe that Solomon or, or Christ was Solomon reincarnated. Uh, because Solomon sinned, but he never got punished with the rod of men. But somebody did, and somebody's kingdom that came from the, line, the, the loins of David, his kingdom was established forever, or is going to be established forever, which is Christ when he comes back. Hamashiach Yahushai. Right? Verse 16. <clears throat> Um, and thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. All right. I wanted to know what his take was on that. We have Isaiah 53, um, the suffering servant, uh, a powerful chapter. Um, Psalms 22, where it speaks about. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my bones, they part my garments. Um among them and cast lots upon my vesture <clears throat> oh right here uh for dogs have compassed me they assembled or they the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me they pierced my hands and my feet so it sucks because i wanted to see how long buddy would last but he didn't last that long uh which is sad it's all good though um if anybody else got smoke with um, the New Testament, y'all are more than likely to comment in on the video. Um, you're more than likely to hit the Instagram, which is Sakari Phoenix or Sakari Las Vegas, whichever one. Um, either or, uh, if you want smoke, man, come on, man. Um, but Lord willing, this was edifying. If you found the video edifying, share it. Uh, if you liked it, it, it was entertaining for the short time it was happening. Um, like it. Definitely subscribe to the Las Vegas channel, the Miami channel. Um, uh, Miami was taken down. Now, Miami still be up. They might still have a, a channel on Miami. Um, the Houston, the Dallas, the um, Space City, the, uh, the Long Beach for sure. Um, Vegas, Phoenix. Um, what else we got? There's so many channels I got to shout out now. New Jersey, New York, uh, for a fact, Atlanta. Um, I'm not gonna sit up here. You, you, just subscribe to the Guardian channel, right? So, um, with that, I want to say call all your how about Shimon Mashiach Yahushai. That's all praise to the most high in the name of his only begotten son, who the word in calls Jesus Christ. Kwam Yashua, y'all stay safe out here, man.